<laughs> um, so we're doing a planned comparison off of the ANOVA that we did last time. Um, for planned comparisons, you're really limited to the number of groups that you have, minus one, because whenever you have a family of hypotheses, that's called uh, the family of hypotheses, each hypothesis has its own type one error, and that's called the per comparison error rate. If you put all of the type one errors together, that's called your family wise error rate. So basically, the whole assumption is that if you have an alpha level of 0.05, that means that five times out of a hundred, we could get significance due to chance alone. That's our type one error rate. So if we have a bunch of comparisons that we try to do, chances are we could get significance, even if we don't really have it. So number of planned comparisons that we can do, and by planned I mean you're doing it before you've seen the data, is limited to your number of groups minus one. So here it would be two, before you have to start correcting for type one error. So um, to do planned comparisons, say for example, we could compare any of these, but we're limited to two, right? So we could compare A1 to A2, or we could do A1 to A3, or we could do A2 to A3. So just as an example, I'm going to do A1 to A2, and I'm going to do A1 to A3. Okay, so to start off with a comparison, we need to assign coefficients. Coefficients are just an arbitrary way of um, mathematically calculating it. So say, for example, if I'm doing A1 versus A2, all my coefficients need to add up to zero. So for my first comparison, I'm going to assign A1, 1, A2, minus 1, and A3, 0. And what this means is that I'm comparing A1 to A2, and 1 plus negative 1 is 0. So these coefficients, um, like I said, are arbitrary. You could either, you could also do um, plus 1 half, minus 1 half, 0. It's however you want to assign them to equal to 0. Um, and I'm actually going to put these coefficients into my equations to figure out the sum squared for these single degree freedom comparisons, also called psi comparisons. So I'm going to use whole numbers because that's easier to do. Um, and again, if you're looking A1, A2, and A3, that just tells me that I'm comparing A1 to A2. So I have specific equations um, that the book gives you. The first one that you need to know is sum squared. Psi is the little notation that we use for the single degree of freedom comparisons. N is equal to the number of subjects per group. Psi is what we're going to find. And this is the sum of all of our coefficients squared. The second formula that we need, since we don't know this number, and this is also from the book, is just the sum of all of our coefficients multiplied by our means of our groups. So these are the two equations that I need, and you can get those from your book. So we're going to do this one first. The psi, that refers to our single degree of freedom comparison, um, we're going to do the sum of all the coefficients times the means of the groups that we're comparing. So my coefficient for A1 is 1 times my mean for group A1, which I calculated to be 3.5. I'm going to add that to my coefficient for A2, which is minus 1, times my mean for A2, which is 4.75. You would also add the coefficient of A3, which is 0, so we're just going to take that step out. And that's my psi. Right. So that is just a number that we're going to put into this equation to get our sum squared. So here, n is the number of subjects per group. So I've got 4. Psi is from here. So it's minus 1.25 squared divided by the sum of all my coefficients squared. So my coefficients, remember, are 1, negative 1, and 0. So I'm going to have 1 squared plus negative 1 squared plus 0 squared. And I get a number of 3.125. So I have a sum squared for just this comparison of 3.125. 
So remember, conceptually, again, when we did the overall ANOVA, which is analysis of variance, we realized that there was a significant difference, but we don't know where that difference is. We just know that there's a difference somewhere between these groups. So the reason why we're going in and actually comparing to these groups is to find exactly, pinpoint exactly where that difference is. So eventually, I'm going to put this back into another source table that looks exactly like the one that you did in ANOVA for all these comparisons.